Hello everyone. So it seems like we are going to have another online semester in a number of different institutes across the country. Now in the previous two YouTube videos that I have made, in the comments section I have received a number of requests asking me to share some tips for this kind of an online semester. So I thought it would be a good idea to make this kind of a video. Now before making this uh, video, I went through YouTube looking at such uh, some similar videos sharing some tips for some online semester uh, and I noticed that many of them share excellent points uh, but they grossly miss out on a number of important points. So through this video I wish to emphasize on some of those important points. Uh, these points I have broadly categorized uh, into four parts. The first is the approach or the mindset that you need to have regarding this online semester. Next, how do you actually go about attending the classes, the mechanics of it. Third, how do you follow up those classes, those online classes. And fourth, how do you deal with the assignments and tests, very important. So let's first go, go into the approach or the mindset that you need to have. So uh, this is a point which I have found which is lacking in almost every other YouTube video uh, which they never make is that uh, they never mention uh, anything regarding the possibility of bad online teaching. So this is not from your perspective, rather from the perspective of the professors. So you see, uh, there's always the possibility that there will be some professors who absolutely do not care. They'll be extremely bad at teaching. And this is true whether the semester is online or offline. We are not talking about that situation. Okay. What I'm actually talking about is the problem that even if the teacher is actually good in a physical real classroom, there is a possibility that he or she may not be very good in online teaching because of whatever reasons, maybe he or she is not very technically uh, savvy uh, or maybe uh, he or she is having some other problems in conducting the online semester. It results in some kind of very bad teaching. Another possibility is that suppose the teacher is maybe somewhat relatively young, he or she is very te technically savvy, she's willing to put in the effort, despite all those best intentions, he or she may not be teaching very well. Because you have to understand that in this new paradigm of online teaching, none of us are very experienced. We have barely like 18 months of experience, barely 18 months. Okay, so we are not very good at this ourselves. None of us are. Okay, so there is always the possibility that we are going to screw up. You have to accept that possibility. And when you actually uh, go in for your online semester, if you see that you are facing difficulties because of the teacher not realizing some of your difficulties and problems and constraints, please, please make sure that you give some kind of constructive feedback or constructive criticism in a very polite way to your professor. So that because he or she is having the best intentions, they can actually improve. Next. Uh, this is from your perspective now, from the student's perspective, that uh, there is always the temptation for students to goof off during an online semester. Okay, because they are not being co constantly monitored directly in front of the teacher, there is always the possibility that they will goof off. You must remember that you should treat an online semester, your online classes, just like regular classes. Never ever let yourself be left behind. It is extremely hard to catch up. Next, uh, again on this point of, get, of catching up, you have the recordings of many of the lectures. Okay, Many of the institutes have made it mandatory for the professors to record their lectures. Whether it is synchronous or asynchronous teaching, the, rec uh, the lectures will be recorded. Now, when these lectures are recorded, there is a great temptation for the students to kind of slack off and then uh, suffer from the delusion that later on they will catch up by looking at those recordings of the video lectures. This is not going to happen. What is actually going to happen is that things are going to pile up in the different courses and they will never be able, able to catch up. Okay, so please do not fall under this delusion that you will catch up by looking at the recordings. Next, regarding the actual classes, how do you uh, how do you go about uh, attending the classes? Now, the first thing is regarding the, the technical things that you will need. Now, my personal feeling is that a mobile phone is good, but a, uh, a desktop or a laptop is better. Now, I understand that for many Indian households, uh, there are certain financial constraints and 
just by saying that uh, that you go and buy a new laptop it is not possible so what i will suggest is that you just give it a serious thought that you need not buy a new laptop okay so you buy a second hand laptop now the problem is that if you buy a second hand laptop the new versions of windows is not going to run okay certainly windows 11 is not going to run if your laptop is like 5 years old or 6 years old okay and even if windows 10 manages to run on it it will not run properly okay you will find uh, actual problems so what i suggest is that if you have little bit of courage buy a second hand laptop which will come which will come much less expensive and try to install linux in it there is a good benefit to this is that it can actually help you add a bullet point in your cv you see if you if you know windows this is not not something which you can mention in your cv nobody cares whether you know windows in your cv if you write like that but if you can write that you know actually linux then that actually creates an additional bullet point okay especially if you are not from a computer science background it kind of creates a good impression that that you are kind of uh, having that extra technical savviness so keep, try to keep that in mind and if there is at all some financial constraint go for a uh, mobile phone uh, nothing too expensive uh, okay the next important point is that uh, if possible try to have a dedicated workspace or a dedicated study space uh, where you can just sit down every day uh, for your online classes again in the indian context i know in many many households this is wishful thinking it is not possible just because i say that you have a dedicated study space it is not possible especially if you have a joint family kind of situation uh, sometimes you may have to sit here sometimes you may have to sit there sometimes you may have an, even have to sit in the kitchen now people who are suffering from these kinds of apparent problems you don't think that you necessarily are at a disadvantage okay so the situation is like this so it is common wisdom that people will ask you to study at a particular place and uh, people who are uh, sitting in different different places will feel at a disadvantage but you see in an actual physical classroom nobody actually sits for all their classes at the same place okay usually okay in most institutes what happens is that one particular course will be held in one particular classroom maybe another course will be held not in not just in another classroom but in maybe in another building so they have to go from one part of the campus to another part and do their classes there now this change of setting can actually help in memory formation actually people have said that uh, the kind of environment that you have in different different situations that can actually reinforce your memory for example the kind of friends that you are sitting with in a particular course that can actually help in creating certain memory connections so if even in your own house you are sitting at different different places maybe that can actually indirectly help you so don't just think that you are always at a disadvantage regarding the actual classes regarding the actual classes uh, i strongly strongly advise you that you set up a morning routine okay all of your classes will inevitably start in the morning you set up a morning routine get up uh, clean yourself up uh, make your bed this is very very important okay recently there was some kind of a viral video on some kind of a army or naval officer giving advice on the advantages of just taking 10 minutes time in the morning to make your own bed how it sets you up beautifully for the entire day there is great wisdom in that try to follow that okay so and uh, uh, have your breakfast and like as if you are actually going for your classes with that kind of seriousness and uh, and nice clean uh, neat attitude you sit down for your classes wherever it may be okay so that will really help you please do not fall into the delusion that you are just going to lie around in your bed lazily under your blanket winter is coming now uh, and uh, you are going to watch your video by holding your mobile phone in your hand uh, in your hand under your blanket that is not going to help you you can watch entertaining videos on youtube like that classes you cannot attend like that actually I mean, you can attend but it will not going to, it is not going to help you next uh, when you are actually attending classes even if even if everything is being recorded make it a point that you sit down and take notes directly live in the classes as if you are actually sitting in a physical classroom this is very very important okay uh, please also make sure that when you are making your notes 
keep separate exercise books or notebooks for different courses. Okay. Uh, uh, I know some people can take it to the extreme, like they will have different color codes and uh, different stickers and whatnot for these things. I'm not asking you to do that much. Okay. Just keep separate exercise books for everything. Uh, certain discipline is required for attending online classes. Actually, this advice of making different notebooks is actually uh, uh, true for offline classes also. See, I was always a student of offline classes and I tried both ways. When I first went to college, I tried to make a single copy for all the subjects because that was the cool stuff to do. I realized it doesn't work. Okay, it completely fails. It's a, it's a massive disaster. Okay, so if you are doing like that, I let me tell you from first hand experience, you are not cool, you are just stupid. Don't do it. Okay, telling from experience. Again, I will emphasize here that when you are present in your classes, be actually physical, no, I mean mentally be present in your class. Okay, when the professor is maybe asking something, try to respond to it. Okay, I know many of us are very, very introverted. We are, uh, we are unwilling to open our mouth in front of others, but try to push yourself just a little bit. Try to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Try to respond. Okay. The good thing is that in an online class, nobody is seeing your face. So there is one less extra shyness to overcome. Just make your voice be heard. Try to ask the professor at least one or two questions a week. Okay. So that way you will also feel a certain connection to the subject. And once you develop that connection, I can guarantee you that you will automatically be able to focus and devote yourself more towards that subject and perform well. Next. Uh, I have mentioned about the importance of taking handwritten notes, but it is all it is true that in an online semester there will be innumerable uh, lecture notes, video files, PPTs, this and that that will be shared by the various professors of the different courses. These will all be in digital format. Now, usually what happens is that in various institutes you will have some kind of course management system like Microsoft Teams or Moodle or Blackboard or Canvas or whatever. Uh, and everything will be there in the cloud. Okay, now it is an extremely bad habit to keep, I mean, to keep yourself reliant on that cloud. Okay, my suggestion is that you download everything. You download everything to your computer or whatever system you are using uh, and keep your files locally. Okay, please, please do not depend on the internet connection to later revise. Furthermore, if you have the things locally, uh, you understand that later on, I mean, when you pass out, uh, I mean, you, you maybe need to come back to these things to revise uh, if you're in a core job, you will have the things ready at your hand. Okay, you, because once you pass out, you will no longer be part of that course management system like Moodle or MS Teams. Okay, so uh, how can you access those if you are only studying from those things? It is always best to download those things locally. Now this brings me to a very important point which I have seen many of the current generation students lack and which is that they uh, suffer from an inability to organize their files uh, properly. Okay, what they will do is they will arbitrarily download everything, keep on downloading everything and dump it everything, uh, dump all the files, everything in the downloads folder. Okay, things will be there but if I ask them to just pick out a certain file from a certain week, they will have to rummage through it ransack through the through the entire folder for two three minutes even to find out one file this is i mean quite a stupid way of approaching it rather you in a separate drive or whatever the uh, file system you are using uh, make separate folders for the different courses uh, make different folder subfolders within that like le lecture notes uh, maybe tutorial sheets uh, maybe assignments to be submitted uh, whatever okay so you know i mean set up your own system Okay, and I, I can assure you, if you look up on the internet on YouTube, there will be innumerable such videos asking you to fo go for this kind of digital system and that kind of digital system. The only common thing that all of those uh, I mean, uh, suggestion advice videos have is that none of them will work for you individually. Different parts of them are very good, uh, like, but the entirety of none of them will be good for you. So you set up your own system, be comfortable with your own thing, Okay, but keep them locally. Another very important thing is that 
once you have your system once you have your files uh, structure and everything you must must make it a point to keep backups this is something which i always tell my students uh, certainly my phd students you always always keep a backup okay you cannot understand the or realize the importance of it unless you lose it okay so maybe one week before the exam or whatever the uh, important uh, deadline is you realize that somehow some kind of technical snag has happened and you have lost all your files then what will you do will you run around uh, asking and begging every, uh, all your batchmates for help okay i mean it's it's a disaster okay don't do this if you have a backup you can quickly restore it next regarding the uh, assignments and tests you see in this online semester for the professors this is a big big challenge the evaluation process assignments and tests and uh, they'll have to rely on some kind of an of an online system uh, maybe through moodle uh, or some other uh, i mean there are assignments in within microsoft teams also so some some kind of online system they'll be following or maybe some kind of in house uh, system uh, in the institute whatever it is there will always be some kind of deadline maybe at 11 pm on certain date you have to submit something now whenever you receive such a deadline in your head you always understand that i mean you take the date uh, you take the deadline as minus 1 hour of that so if the actual deadline is 11 pm you think that the deadline is 10 pm and try to submit your assignment or test or whatever the thing is uh, by that time okay the reason is that these online systems can somewhat be flaky flaky means something or the other will go wrong especially at the last moment when everybody is trying to submit something or the other goes wrong okay i'm telling this from first and experience it has happened many many times only in the past it has happened okay so at that last moment if you say that such and such technical problem has happened no professor is going to believe you okay they have other problems i mean 100 other problems to deal with they are not going to listen to you next for online tests what i have seen is that uh, because we professors know that uh, by the very nature of the online tests uh, it is going to be open book and certainly open internet i mean you can look up everything you can google everything it is certainly not a uh, test for mem memory we cannot set up our system like that uh, so the tests happen to be more, more and more difficult so you have to be really really proficient and good at your subject to be able to perform well this is very very important not many people realize this okay like in an actual physical test maybe the questions are not that difficult now one way uh, which in which you can significantly make your life easier is to have some kind of a programmatic framework to automate some of the repetitive tasks for example in many of the technical courses you will find uh, and this is irrespective of the department you will find that you will have to calculate eigen values or eigen vectors or maybe you will have to calculate determinants and this is not just for linear algebra mind you okay in many of the mechanical engineering courses we have this and i'm sure even in electrical engineering and other uh, other uh, departments you have this uh, so these kinds of things you can easily program and keep it uh, ready at your hand maybe uh, in python or matlab or whatever uh, you are comfortable with so the moment these things come you can quickly calculate these things without the extra overhead of doing these things manually or in a much more difficult and cumbersome way in your calculator okay so these are certain important things uh, which i wish to especially emphasize on uh, i have left out many of the other things uh, so please feel free to uh, put in uh, some of the important points which you think are also uh, extremely important in the in the comment section and uh, i would li just like to end this video with one extra thing uh, is that uh, if it is indeed true that this is really the last online semester we are going to have my suggestion is that for the last time enjoy your ghar ka khana enjoy your mom's uh, cooking for the last time properly okay all the best